This is Chicago. When you think about critical parts of a city, your thoughts may go to an electrical grid, roads, public transportation, and all of that would be absolutely true. But parks belong on that list. They're easy to take for granted. Green spaces with trees. At first glance, they don't scream essential. But without them, the concrete jungle is much less livable. Chicago was founded with the slogan, Herbs in Orto, City in a Garden. But that was more aspirational than reality. The reality? The Chicago River was filled with industrial and human waste. The air is polluted with factory smoke. And most of the people are living in cramped shacks and tenements. Chicago residents demanded more parks because they were a necessity. In 1869, the South, West, and Lincoln Park Commissions were created to build a system of connected parks. It was nicknamed the Emerald Necklace, but more commonly known today as our boulevard system. The South Park Commission hired Frederick Law Olmsted, the architect of New York Central Park, to design what would become Jackson and Washington Parks. For years, progress was slow until Jackson Park was chosen as a site for the 1893 World's Fair. After the fair, the Palace of Fine Arts became the Museum of Science and Industry, and the rest of the park continued its construction for decades. More recently, Jackson Park was chosen as the location of the Obama Presidential Center, if it survives its court battle. The Midway Plaisance connects Jackson and Washington Parks, and is alongside the University of Chicago. These connections are usually designated as boulevards. A boulevard in Chicago is a widened street with its own green space that connects the parts of the system together. Often, a street name can change as it enters the boulevard system. Sacramento Avenue becomes Humboldt Boulevard. Wrightwood Avenue, Logan Boulevard. Washington Park is the location of the DuSable Museum, one of the oldest and largest museums dedicated to the study and preservation of African American history. Two miles west of Washington Park is Sherman Park, designed by Fred Olmsted Jr. Its unique design has its fields surrounded by its lagoon, like a moat. The West Commission created Douglas, Garfield, and Humboldt Parks. They hired architect William LeBaron Jenny, best known for creating the world's first skyscraper here in Chicago. The community of Douglas Park, now mostly African American, were successful recently in having the park's name changed from Senator Stephen Douglas, who argued for slavery to be determined by the states, to Frederick Douglas, the famous abolitionist. Garfield Park is best known for its gold dome field house and for its conservatory. Each West Park used to have a greenhouse, but they were too expensive to maintain. Eventually, they were torn down and replaced with Garfield's conservatory, which is one of the largest in the U.S. Humboldt Park was originally named after Alexander von Humboldt, a German naturalist. Throughout the 1950s and 70s, the Humboldt Park neighborhood attracted a Puerto Rican community, fleeing a then gentrifying Lincoln Park. Humboldt now holds a very large Puerto Rican flag and the Institute of Puerto Rican Arts and Culture. North of Humboldt Park is my personal favorite boulevard because it's where I grew up, Logan Boulevard. At its heart is the Illinois Centennial Monument, built in 1918 to celebrate 100 years of statehood. Last but not least, we have the Lincoln Park Commission. We'll start with a minor failure. Our emerald necklace isn't complete. Diversity Parkway was supposed to be turned into a boulevard, but legal action delayed its creation until it was no longer feasible. 
The Commission had huge plans for the expansion of an already existing Lincoln Park. But first, they had to move the dead bodies. Lots of dead bodies. A part of today's Lincoln Park used to be the city cemetery. Instead of plans for multiple parks, like the other commissions, the Lincoln Park Commission simply expanded the already existing Lincoln Park. And when I say expand, I mean Lincoln Park is seven miles long. It includes over 1,200 acres stretching from Grand to Hollywood Avenue. It is so large <laughs> in my entire life, it never occurred to me to consider it one single park. A zoo, museums, beaches, theater. Lincoln Park is an absolute wonder. This is Potter Palmer, who built a mansion. N no, a castle. He built a castle along the lake and wanted to increase its property value. So he convinced the city to build a road near it. Arrogant? Selfish? Yes. But that road turned out to be Lakeshore Drive, and it's hard to imagine Chicago without it. Seventy years of construction, 26 miles of greenways, eight massive parks, 19 boulevards and six squares. An incredible legacy to generations of Chicagoans past, present, and future.